Hello and welcome. Today I have Jamie Myers Co from Aduco Gym joining us on the Business Growth Mindset podcast. Jamie's an entrepreneur and a CEO of Aduco Gym. He has a business degree from Trinity College Dublin and is also a qualified holistic nutritionist with the Irish Health Culture Association. His first venture began at college, co-founding Forest Software, a CRM software developed for the hair and beauty industry. Forest is now a world-leading supplier of salon software with over 10,000 customers worldwide. In 2007, after training at a Duco gym, he began his personal training journey with a Duco gym and in 2008 opened his first franchise. In 2011, he was appointed the CEO of the franchise and oversaw its growth. Jamie now has four franchises and is expanding into Canada and Australia. Educo Gym is a method and a model that generates results in just 20 minutes of focused training. Their purpose is transformation. Jamie has trained the likes of singer Robbie Williams and former Ryder Cup captain and Open champion Darren Clark. Jamie has a passion for all things health and fitness, but above all, transforming people's lives. Welcome to another episode of the Business Growth Mindset Podcast, Series 3. Uh, I'm your host, Christian Lavolsi, and I'm incredibly excited, and I mean this, incredibly excited to welcome our guest and my friend, Jamie Myers Co. on the show today. Jamie, welcome. Thank you, Christian. And uh, you may have gathered from that. Thank you, Christian. Jamie is not Australian. He's uh, dialing in all the way from Ireland. Um, it's uh, it's quite early in the morning for you in Ireland, isn't it, Jamie? It's not too bad. It's eight o'clock in the morning, but uh, right. and, you know, three small and about children. Eight I've been up. I've been up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that is true. <laughs> it's pretty cold this morning, about six degrees. Right, amazing. Um, so uh, <laughs> Jamie would have been up early because he has three boys uh, under the age of five uh, running around. And uh, what time did the boys get up? Who, who got up the Who got up the earliest this morning? Mm, Sebastian, right, and about and just before six. Just before six. Oh, okay. So he's not waking up yes. at five when we used to be on calls, going, "Dad, Dad, <laughs> yeah, no, your no. blue light, your blue light's not on. Your red light's still on." <laughs> <laughs> we used to have some great conversations early in the morning, Jamie and I. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to get Jamie today to share a little bit about himself and uh, Educo Gym, um, a revolutionary training uh, system, program, nutrition, uh, mindset phenomena. Uh, I was recently in Ireland hanging out with Jamie for three weeks and uh, we might talk about those results later, but um, that's BlackRock behind you, right? That is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's one of the locations. Um, but Jamie, rather than me tell the story, and because mm. obviously I've got you here, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about you Okay, you've done some pretty exciting stuff even before Aduco Gym. Uh, you're one of those tech heads that founded companies in, in a dormitory. Um, but you know, I, I might be making it sound a little bit uh, fancier than it really is. But anyway, I, I you know, uh, it's definitely no Facebook. But I think you've done pretty well for yourself. Um, and um, you know, let's let's tell me a little bit about you. But what I think the listeners would love to hear is where you have come from and where you are today. So take us through that journey. Yeah, sure. I I, I grew up um, in the south of Ireland in a, a county called Tipperary. Some people may know it as Long Way to Tipperary, and um, I grew up on a stud farm, so surrounded by animals, but but mainly horses. So my family is all involved in horse racing and horses. So it, it was a, a pretty cool upbringing to be on a farm and to be in that industry. And um, my grandfather was a, a very famous racehorse trainer. So we we grew up um, surrounded by, um, I suppose, that, that level of success, which I think probably rubs off on you. Certainly watching somebody being able to perform at that high level. You, you I, I was always very interested in peak performance and, um, you know, how, how you could be your best. I was always very competitive, played a lot of sport, and um, I was fascinated, even at a very young age, by the role that nutrition played. You know, uh, dad always said, you are what you eat. 
So uh, depending on on what my mood was like, uh, he tried to figure out what I'd had. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we know uh, having young children and watching young children, how much um, nutrition definitely affects uh, mood and energy. And as an adult, uh, the same obviously applies. I was also very interested in exercise and the role that uh, exercise played. You know, if I went for a run in the morning, how how well I would feel. It would almost feel like I got my system started. So um, I, I was very interested in that. Um, throughout school, college, played a lot of sport, like I said. And then uh, probably the main sport that I, I really started to have a passion for was golf. Um, really through maybe the last year or so of school and then into college. So played on the college golf team. And I think I had in my mind that uh, I would give it a shot as a, a golf professional, but quickly realized that uh, the what that was going to take and whether you know, whether you know, whether you think that you have the ability or not, um, you still would think that if you put a lot of time and effort into it, but it was, it was then I came across the Aduco system and, uh, that was in my final year of uh, college. And the, the Aduco system itself is actually a, um, a system that teaches you how to be more, it's like an educational system that teaches you how to be more successful by using more of your mind. And I went on an Aduco seminar and that really was life-changing for me. And uh, when I came back from that seminar, I put golf almost to the side and I started um, a company. I started a business. Um, like you said, it's in, in, in technology. And um, that was a it was a, a brilliant experience. We were one of the first companies to do sort of bulk text messaging or SMS where we'd uh, you know, we were we were asked by Smirnoff, the uh, the vodka maker if we could uh if we would be able to send out text messages to students to promote smirnoff ice at the time and uh we said yeah of course we can so then we had to figure out how to do it and we bought text messages which sounds weird from a company in sweden a telecom in sweden and we sent out lots of text messages using a platform that we had developed and uh, that platform then turned into um, an appointment book with SMS reminders. And we were doing bulk SMS for clubs and companies and all sorts of things. And then that developed into um, a salon software. So a CRM system for the hair and beauty industry. And it's um, gone on to be very successful. So I, I guess I kind of had a background in sport and and then I, I went into business um, and then um, in about 2007, my business partner and I decided, you know, we were we were joint CEO and we were getting to a size of a company that it's probably not a good, um, well, we decided it probably was, it's like having two parents. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of things can fall between the two of you. So one of us needed to take a leadership role and he, he decided, we both decided he was going to be CEO and then I was going to stay on the board, but I was going to start a Duco Gym. And uh, because the Duco Gem had become a, a franchise at that point and uh, using the system that I was very familiar with with training and nutrition. Um, and so that was 2007, 2008. Um, and that's where I find myself today uh, r running and in charge of a Duco Gem. And I have a number of franchises myself. And, you know, since working with you, obviously, we've looked at how we can really grow the grow the business. Um, and I'm really excited about bringing the concept to Australia and growing it um, in other markets, including obviously here in Ireland. Yeah. So that's uh, a very well, sort of condensed that, journey. No, it's, it's a great journey. He left out a ton of stuff, which I'm kind of happy because uh, I heard it all before, before, but I think our audience are, uh, are also going to realize really quickly, uh, Jamie's uh, really easy to listen to. Um, he's a, he's, he's, he's a genuine storyteller and um but genuine in the sense that you have to ask him the right questions to get the right answers. Um, so uh, uh, I love I love the care and, and the thinking that goes behind the way you tell the story. And and you're very humble, Jamie. You are very humble. Um, and and so is your whole family. I have the privilege of having met everyone, uh, and um, and and they are really good people. And and I think that speaks volumes for the way you also run Educo Gym. Um, the whole Educo Gym. Uh, franchise is run with a um, a genuine authenticity and care for its people. I've seen it. Yes, I'm chief advisor, uh, obviously for full disclosure of a Duco gym, um, and uh, and yes, I have decided to uh, partner with Jamie. Um, <laughs> breaking news: I've decided to partner with Jamie to bring uh, a Duco gym to Australia and a, 
couple of other uh, continents. Uh, and that's because of the outstanding results that Educo Gym achieves, unlike any other system. Now, we're not really here to talk about Educo Gym, and we're certainly not here to tell everybody about our partnership. That was going to be a bigger press release. But um, I think what's really important is um, probably sharing with everybody uh, that your biggest challenge, right, that you faced in a Duco gym, particularly, I think rather than the past, let's talk about a Duco gym um, and, and how you've tackled it, right? So a lot of our listeners love to know about people's failure and success. And I love asking this question, you know, so what's the biggest challenge that you faced in your role at a Duco gym and how have you tackled it? Probably, um, in my mind, anyway, that the biggest challenge that I would face is um, it's really, I think when you get to a certain company size and you want to grow, it, it really then becomes very obvious it's about your people and um, how you grow and develop and empower your people to allow them to do their jobs properly and then to allow you to, to grow the business. You, you, you can't, you know, as an, an entrepreneur, you start something small and you start it with this maybe small group of people and everybody does a lot of jobs and has a lot of, uh, have a lot of hats. They, they do a lot of roles and they have to be reasonably good at doing lots of different things. And then I think as you grow, people need to take ownership of particular roles. You need to be able to define those roles and then you need to be able to hold people accountable to their to you know their KPIs and and making sure that they know what they're what they're supposed to be doing um, and it should be I, I think the best business is the one that has a job that's autotelic and autotelic basically means is that the job and the performance tells the person how well they're doing and how good they are uh, so it's like um, as a manager or as a leader your job really is to hold up a mirror to your team and they have, have to be able to see a reflection of how they're performing and that then tells them. So a lot of, a lot of jobs in a lot of companies um, it's not very well defined and people don't know whether they're doing a good job or a bad job. And often teams are, are rewarded based on a team performance and a players carry Z players. Um, whereas you want to have a, an organization, I think that people, uh, the A players are rewarded and therefore you attract more A players. So I think that's been the biggest challenge um, and something that obviously you've really helped us with is to is to define exactly what it is that we're doing, um, get people excited about the vision and the purpose, and uh, make sure that everyone understands what the values are for the business, so that you're attracting the, the people with similar values, values that are a good fit for your business, and then um, you're you're very much setting out uh, clear expectations and then measuring them according to those expectations, and that's the challenge. It sounds easy on paper. Um, but that's uh, what you continually have to do and continually remind people of of why they're there. I think that you uh, the, the key there thing is there is implementation. You know, um, it's all well and good. You know, yes, you you know, and thank you. It's very kind of you to acknowledge me for the work that we did. But at the end of the day, you guys did all the work. I um, I just was able to extract the bare foundational deep entrenched values of the organization, which is also what drove me to, you know, build our friendship, but also then uh, form this partnership uh, to open up in, in other continents. But it's really the implementation. So why don't we talk a little bit about that? Because, uh, you know, you've, you, you, you've changed the way you approach uh, managing the whole Oduco gym franchise because you also uh, sit over the top of the whole franchise for Dr. Tony Quinn and and for Sarah, um, so you um, you know galvanizing the franchise ease together has been a big one, uh, and the values and the core, the, what we call the core, right, Jamie? So core purpose, core values, core competencies. But how are you um, for, for 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 all of our business people and non-business people, or people that work in companies? How how are you uh, bringing not only your your team in your in your sites in your locations, um, and you know there's there's twenty people there, um, and you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of members too. How are you galvanizing everybody, including all the franchisees, as well? Because we we are talking about a lot of people here. It's not 
this is not just like a one gym. <laughs> it is, it is, you know, 10 in different countries, 10 or 11. Uh, we are 11. 11. It is 11. I don't know why yeah. I keep going to 10. 10 just sounds like such a good round number. It's round. But it's 11. Yeah, round number. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and we plan to, you know, open, you know, starting with one, but going to 20 in a very short period of time in Australia. Um, but can you tell me how have you galvanized everyone? How have you brought everyone together? Just quickly, just, you know, I know this, you could talk about yeah. this for ages. So just quickly. Yeah. I mean, you know, to, just for, for anybody watching or listening to this, obviously in a franchise, it's slightly different. So if you have your own business, um, you have your direct reports. They have their they have their direct reports, and the, the structure is uh, is very clear. With a franchise, you often have people who come in and they have all types of different business experience, and some some may have very little business experience starting out, um, and they all because they're owning and operating an independent business. You don't necessarily have the the control that you would have in um, an, in a regular company. So the challenge is then how, how do you bring everybody together? And I think, you know, obviously what we've worked on together is really defining the purpose, what exactly we're about. So you know, we're about transformation, and then defining the vision of how, how we want to grow, and then making sure that people are uh, understand uh, what the values are, how we want to operate on a day to day business, what's really important for us as a team to communicate to each other and also to communicate to our clients and then understanding, you know, what are our core competencies? What are we really good at? And then really emphasizing that and uh, making sure that you're very clear also what your brand promises. So when, when people come into contact with your business um, or they, they see any type of communication from you, that they immediately get a sense of um, what it is that you are going to do uh, for them as a company. So it's really... It's making that and constantly communicating that, making it exciting so that people buy into it. And it forms almost like the rules of the game um, where you're making sure that people are, are following those uh, values, the purpose, the vision, the core competencies, and everything is, uh, is standardized so that people know, like I said, what the rules of the game are. Um, and you're enforcing those as opposed to directly trying to control somebody else's business, which obviously that's not going to work. They they got into business to have their own business, not not to be a, an employee necessarily. Cool. Uh, so let me ask you this question: then. What is the number one core competency? What is it that you guys are really bloody good at that you know no one else can replicate easily? Yeah. So we we have the Aduco model. The, that success system, that educational system. Um, and at the core of that is what we call unconscious attention. And that's uh, at the deepest level of attention. You can think of it like pure attention. Some people talk about being in the zone or being in the flow. That's um, at a particular level of attention. And there's obviously all sorts of levels to that attention, depending on how a person performs. And we have a, a structure that helps a person to get into that state of flow. So um, that's very unique to what we do. And then um, it also applies to goal setting. So exactly how you goal set, how you apply your attention to your goal. So that essentially we're, we're actually using the power of the unconscious mind, um, which is obviously uh, something you could talk about for about a week. And, um, but it's, it, it gets a person to uh, essentially re really buy into their vision or their goal and then, therefore, the results are much more likely to happen, um, or you certainly get far superior results, as the research actually has shown. Amazing, yeah, no, and uh, and obviously, uh, I I've had the privilege of training with you. So has Robbie Williams, and so has Darren Clark. Let's let's not, you know, let's let's look at how great Robbie Williams looked when he sang at the AFL Grand Final. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Robbie Williams. Is one is the only person in the world that actually has an Aduco gym machine in his house. <laughs> yeah, he has a he has a machine in his uh, garage in his house in uh, in Los Angeles. Yeah, amazing. And and you trained him uh, personally for for a while, didn't you? Teaching yeah. him the exact same system, the unconscious attention, and yeah. um, and and then obviously working out. I think there is also a couple of videos online. Uh, with Robbie and and uh, yeah. and Thurston, uh, another one of the the trainers in the US, 
um, yeah. uh, when when that machine was installed, right? And that's that's actually in the garage. It is it is it is raw. We have to maybe try and find the link and share it with everyone in the show notes. Um, so yeah. you know, I, th- I think that what you know, one of the things that I admired about training with you, and obviously myself being a former professional athlete as well, um, one thing that stood out to me uh, was was this exact ability to train to get people to this unconscious state when you train. Um, you know, what was it? I, I, I bench pressed 408, was it 480 pounds on my, what, third third or fourth training day? Yeah, so it's right. 400, and, it was 460 pounds actually is the weight. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's over over this shoulder here. You can see that station over there where we set up like an incline bench press. But um, yeah, so you can make that flat and um, yeah, it's 460 pounds. So it's a unique machine. This is a time machine. It's another one of our core competencies. Mm. Uh, we designed this to uh, allow a person to train in this deep state of attention. So, you know, if you go into a normal gym, a warehouse type gym, you're, you're wandering all over the place, trying to find your next piece of equipment. And a lot of the intensity is lost when you do that, but also your attention tends to wander and you get distracted. Uh, you're always with a trainer with us. So somebody is putting you through your paces. Um, the, the way you put it, uh, where you're in an unconscious state, sounds like we trained you so hard that you passed out, but it wasn't like that. Um, it's where I don't know. <laughs> I was breathing pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can imagine um, all of your attention is tied up in what you're doing, because it's very hard to think of something else when you're trying to lift a very heavy weight. And um, that really is the key to it. So a lot of people talk about meditation or mindfulness or any of these type of things. Um, but they often, what the, the subject matter that they're using isn't very exciting or interesting. So it's much harder to hold your attention. You know, in yoga, focusing on the candle flame, there's not so many people that are very excited about a candle flame. So it's often easier to really focus on something that you're interested in or stick you under a very heavy weight where you have to really pay attention to lift it. Uh, is a great way to focus all of your mind on what you're doing. And that's, you get that uh, mind, your mind then becomes sort of still or quiet, the quiet in mind. Um, and that's, uh, you know, you have a session of 15, 20 minutes where your mind is in that state, and then it's much more creative after it. You'll get much more insights and awarenesses. And, um, and that is absolutely true. That actually does happen. You, you, you just, you just, hinted probably the um the number one reason why anybody should train at an Uduko gym and it's uh, it's the one major reason uh, <laughs> that i am so excited to bring this system to australia and that is 20 minutes you want to just explain what I mean by 20 minutes, please. Absolutely. So our, every session in an Aduco gym is 20 minutes or less. Um, so often people exercise for maybe 12, 15 minutes, and then they do some maybe ab work, that type of thing. But the, the sessions are less than 20 minutes. And um, the reason that they're so short is because there's absolutely no time wasted. So somebody took the time to measure uh, the effectiveness or efficiency of a person in a regular gym. And what they found is in a 20 minute session in a normal gym, 10 minutes is spent traveling between machines or waiting for people to get off machines. So 10 out of every 20 minutes is wasted. So people often spend hours in the gym, but the actual amount of time that they spend training is very little. Um, So, you know, you go to a machine, somebody's on it, they're reading the magazine, they're on their phone more likely nowadays. Um, but they're certainly not trained. You just showed your age. Say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you, yeah, I know. And I, I just look so much younger. That's the effect of uh, training in a Duke gym. Anyway, so, but the. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Wait, wait a second. Hang on. He, he was actually kidding. Um, Duke Gym's founder founded it for exactly that cell rejuvenation. And I guess that's another conversation altogether, but I just wanted to just, he wasn't, Jamie wasn't actually kidding when he, when he said that, um, the demographic in Ireland of people that train at a Duco gym is on the older side and they look fantastic. Like your mum and dad, for example, 
they yeah. they don't look anywhere near that age. And maybe it's, that's no. genes as well. But everyone that trains at a Duco gym is stronger, healthier, and most of the bloody locations are upstairs. So after you've done a leg <laughs> session, getting down those stairs is so difficult. I know. It requires lots you, of attention. <laughs> you can see that all the blood's just gone to my head as I've just had this memory. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, but, it's worth pointing. Like my, my dad is 74, uh, mum is 64. They've just recently done a completed um a mammoth um well, I suppose you could say an athletic event, but they 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 did a cycle from Paris to Nice, which is about 800 kilometers, and they did that in five days. So they're incredibly fit. Uh they, they my are. mum's waist is my mum's waist at 64 is like 29 inches. I mean, she's in incredible shape. Um and dad is they're both like very very strong it's about that vibrancy and that life force it's you know every, everybody has energy that's the one thing we all have in common because we're all alive and really what we're aiming to do is to maximize that level of energy because the more energy you have the more life anybody who's in a job and they don't really enjoy it and they're you know it's a bit of a slog and you know, they've got young kids and they find themselves, they're not really eating very well. They're not getting much exercise and their level of energy diminishes rapidly over time. And suddenly they find themselves in a situation where they're just genuinely unhappy. So uh, we're, we're focusing on increasing your life energy, first of all, by getting um, your energy out of your heavy thinking and thoughts so that the mental aspect is enormous. But then from a, an exercise point of view, the critical thing to building energy is to build lean tissue, to build muscle, because muscle burns 90% of the calories you burn on a daily basis. The more muscle you have, the more energy you produce and the more energy you have. And then obviously, if you get people to eat uh, in the right way, not low calorie, just really, really good food, getting the right nutrition, um, which will taste delicious, then you have huge levels of energy. So it's about looking at all the different ways that you can increase energy. Um, and that's, I think, what people value the most. I think that's also really important. Duco Gym, although the word gym is in the name, is not actually a gym. Um, it's as you said earlier, it's personal training, you know, smaller groups, essentially three people generally to a trainer or thereabouts, uh, and also only three people to a machine at any given time, 20 minute workouts. But it's the complete package. You know, you also provide every one of your members a nutritional plan. Um, and and I certainly know that I, you know, I was on the Kickstart program and, you know, I'm pretty sure it was just under six kilos of body fat loss, but I gained. No, it was more. Shit, it was more than that. It was seven kilos of body fat loss and 7.2 something, and then six kilos of muscle mass gained. Uh, yeah. And one of the things that we're going to do, you guys use uh, – the calipers and stuff in Ireland, what we're going to do in Australia is actually have a body scan machine in each location uh, because the one big thing that you guys are also about, if I can indulge, is results. You know, yeah. um, you don't go to a Duco gym to look at yourself in the mirror and see how big your biceps have gone. You know, it, it, and if you go in there, no one's looking in mirrors. Everyone's just there. Training. You don't have time. Uh, that's right. There is no time. You can't even talk. You know, like, you know, apart from all you heard me doing was heavy breathing. And, and I'll, I'll tell you something, guys. This is the absolute unbelievable point. There's no cardio. Zero. There's not one treadmill in there, not one bike. So all, all of you listening, if you're not getting excited about this, I know some of my, some of my listeners are a bit like me. We're executives, time poor. You know, we all have personal trainers. We are not getting results. Um, but we think that, you know, we have to go and train. Uh, and then the, the other people that I know all are in gyms and and doing at least an hour of training. And most of the time that's having a coffee at uh, Next Generation downstairs and getting the caffeine kick to go upstairs. Um, but, you know, um, the, 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 the truth is, it, it's, it's, the truth is in what you just said. You know, it's about life force energy. And, you know, I, I, I had the privilege of working with your entire team and the franchisees. Um, they're all really good people who, who, who really love what they do. And that's because people get results. Do you want to just, you want to just, just, just share with us 
your your current 28 day challenge results because there was the winner but it wasn't just the winner it was all the other people had incredible results in 28 days jamie do you want to just share the winner and and then some other examples even yeah. the person that did the worst and this this yeah. fascinate our listeners yeah, so so the, the results varied from um people losing about 12 pounds in 28 days all the way up to 19 pounds in, in 28 days. And that's just fat loss. Um and then really the the key part about it is getting people to add back lean tissue because that's really going to make the difference, even from point of view of your shape, but also your health. And um yeah, so uh honestly, the results are incredible. It has to be about the results. I mean, it's that, that that's so important when you're in business is that you're producing you're you're delivering on what you say you do and uh it, it, the more value you can provide for that the more loyalty that you have from your from your customers and um it was like uh, you know obviously you mentioned Darren Clark and Robbie Williams but um it was because of the results that Darren Clark got i think he lost 50 pounds in 4 months it was a total transformation um, and it was because of that Robbie Williams saw those results, similar kind of age, both in their forties at the time. So then, uh, Robbie said, gee, I, I wouldn't mind doing that type of system, <laughs> training an hour a week and getting those kind of results. So that's exactly what we did with them, with, the, with them both, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so it, it's, it is about the results. The, the, the most recent challenge, just what it always surprises me. It shouldn't, but, uh, you, you really, they, what they say the clients say as a result of doing a challenge and this was an internal challenge for members it was a, a members exclusive 28 day challenge you know they, they're probably training with us all year and it's sort of a 28 day period we just get them to focus that little bit more for and to really uh to move their results on and the results were absolutely incredible i was just trying to find because i've just seen the um the wall chart um of uh, in nice uh, another location that Angela has put up, uh, who's a superstar, total champion, um, has yep. been with you for a long time too. Um, she uh, she put up all the photos of all like two, four, six, eight, nine different people, and their results are unbelievable in that time. And you know, so I was talking to someone, and they said to me, "Oh, but I don't want to build muscle, right? No, no, no. This is not bodybuilding." This is no. lean muscle tissue. This is not about how big your biceps can get. No, right? it's you more know, body sculpt. It's body sculpting. I mean, you know, if somebody mm-hmm. wanted to to really um, build their body, and, I, and I don't don't think of it in terms of those big, ugly, bumpy muscles where the guys are are, are taking things that they shouldn't be. It's more think about it as actually building up your body. So your body disintegrates as you get older, and uh, you're losing muscle from the age of about. 27 as a man 25 as a lady so you're you're in an anabolic a catabolic state which means you're losing muscle so it's about building back building up your body so it is bodybuilding but not not as most people would perceive it it's in the real sense of actually building up that vitality that strength that people are losing as they get older um i think body sculpting i think is probably better that's right no and i like that and then look again i i I can testify to the fact that you know Jamie had me on uh, a insulin resistant diet because I have med- medical medically diagnosed insulin resistance, and uh, I had more energy than ever before. I couldn't even keep up with eating um, the amount of food that he kept putting in front of me, um, and also uh, I had more energy than I've ever had before. And yeah. so you know, to me, uh, that was the science sealed delivered. Uh, yeah, and, I mean, it was such know, a visible difference. There was such a visible difference in you in only mm. three weeks. Uh, it was oh, yeah, especially summer. when I was sipping my first champagne on the way back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jamie wasn't there, yeah. so I was taking advantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all about celebrating your results. <laughs> yeah, no, we were, but uh, but no, no, it was it was not for me. It was actually the shape of my upper torso in particular, um, and that that's that doesn't. With any other training I've ever done, that's never happened that fast, like two weeks. And even I remember coming back and Lucy went, wow. Like, forget the fact that my suit, I was three inches smaller around the waist. You know, um, unfortunately, I have regained uh, most of the weight that I lost only because of uh, some cortisol steroids I had to take for losing my hearing, um, which 
you know, it was horrible. Um, and, uh, and and now we're slowly weighing off that. So we are getting ready for the arrival of a Duco gym in Australia. But, Jamie, uh, I want to now dive back into the, uh, the, the formalities of the podcast. So what should I ask you that I don't know enough to ask? Um, that is an interesting question. I know that's hard because I actually know a lot about you already. So yeah, I'm just trying but, to think. What do you do? What don't you know? Yeah, yeah. So, but what what should I ask you, right? That I don't even know enough to ask. That's about anything. Give us some insight into Jamie Myers Co. By the um, way, it, it reads Myers Cough, but it's Myers Co. Um, correct. Yeah, just putting that there. Um, <laughs> I love doing that too. <laughs> I, I probably I think what what people might uh, benefit maybe from understanding is why why a person gets out of shape in the first place. Um, I know it's not it's not necessarily a, a personal thing, um, but I think that's very much part of the science behind what what we do or what so, we do. So, if I should ask you anything in this world, I should ask you, hey Jamie, tell me why people fall out of shape. Come on, man. What are you doing to me? No, 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 not not that's, one that's of my listeners something... is going to be interested in asking you that question. Hey, Jamie. Totally disagree. Right? Hey, Jamie, please tell me. <laughs> I'd right? say a lot of people are wondering. <laughs> Maybe they're wondering, but that is not in the point of the question. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, you know what? You fail that question. I'm moving on. Right. <laughs> you, okay. know, you know too much. I, I do actually, and then there's stuff here that we won't talk about on the podcast. But look, tell me, um, tell me about a customer that touched your heart, and tell me about a customer that changed your business. Um, well, honestly, the, there's a client at the moment, a guy called Christy, who's in um, Dundrum, and um, the results that he's achieved really encompass everything that we do because uh, he came to us um, with very low self-esteem. Um, I think he would he has described it as very much being in a state of uh, depression, uh, so very, very low mentally, and also with a lot of weight to lose, so a number of different health issues. And um, I think he has lost, uh, I want to say, maybe about 45 kilos over is the course the of just- I met? When I when yeah. I came over, and he yeah. so he's continued to lose more weight since then. Yeah, wow. He's he's actually he has won the last two member challenges uh, for for Dundrum, and um, yeah, so he continues to lose weight, and he's really just uh, he's totally inspiring. He, he he looks in in incredible shape now. He's uh, you know his, one of his goals was to buy some skinny jeans and to to yeah. to get into. Uh, to get into some tight fitting clothes and honestly he's just it's absolutely phenomenal so it's like nearly nearly 100 pounds so it's just under 50 kilos in, and, in, in, um, not, not even a long time frame jamie how long no has it been? no over the course of about 12 months yeah yeah well wow. he's and- got so strong i mean he's physically very strong because often you can lose that weight but it doesn't necessarily look like it was healthy weight loss you know, you can kind of become gaunt around the face. You just, you, you look soft. You don't look like, any, but he actually looks like he's in just. He's uh, clearly stopped cheating because last time I spoke to him, he's like, oh, I have had a few pints. I've been, I've been getting on it a bit. <laughs> but he, he looked excellent when I saw him. And he, I reckon he dropped probably 25 kilo by then. So he's, he's dropped another 15 kilo, right? Probably but has, that's yeah, just body weight. Sort of five months. But what I'm saying is that's body weight. But he was actually building uh, lean muscle at the same time. So, it, you know, and I think this is what a lot of people don't understand. You could lose, you know, like my net weight position, me personally, when I came back, was one kilo difference. But it was three inches off my waist. Yeah. So every, every inch is just under two kilos of uh, body fat. So if you lose yeah. an inch off your waist, it's four pounds or just under two kilos. And, I mean, this yeah, he, so. he he has – he was – Really he shrunk. Big in. Man. He was a very big man. Yeah. I mean, he must be about six foot five. Yeah, um, he's taller than me. It was like taller than me and you. And yeah. it was like, wow. 
And yeah. that's amazing. That is that but is it's, incredible. It's his mental. It's his mental outlook. I think has been the most most impressive result. Is how that's changed. How he's literally just come out of himself. You know, from being somebody who was, as we say in Ireland, quite far back in themselves, um, to suddenly really, really coming out and being so much brighter and having you know, he's got such a confidence in himself. Um, it's really really incredible. Um, and, so and, and look, I, I think. What what makes Educo Gym so special here is that the purpose that we harnessed is transformations, okay, and and that's exactly what's happened to this to this uh, client. But what is more impressive is the likelihood of him going back and adding this forty five kilos is very low because of all the lean muscle that he's built and the mindset training that's gone on the aduco right yeah. to change yeah. those habits right um and and again you know there's no crash diets there's no you know it's not like people could have to abstain from having a lifestyle it's quite the opposite you know yeah. it is a lifestyle right and um Correct. and 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 one that you know helps burn more calories because unlike a starvation diet where you lose muscle tissue at the same rate that you lose Body fat, yeah, if even not worse. sometimes faster, yeah. And guess what's harder to put back on? Yeah, muscle, exactly. muscle. right? Not fat. Fat's easy. I look at, I look at uh, a bakery shop's front entrance. Not even go in, and I put on three kilos. Um, so uh, you know, all the ladies will, will will completely understand what I mean. Um, you know, it's unfortunately it's a genetic thing for me. Uh, at least that's the <laughs> excuse I tell myself. Jamie, uh, I think that's really great. What what's your biggest failure? So and and I guess more importantly, what did you learn from that? Yeah, careful because you've had a few. <laughs> I I don't I'll, honestly. Oh, that I, was I never see, like, mean, right? No, no, yeah, no seriously. No, no. I well, I never I never see a failure as as a failure, and I don't know. I'm sure somebody I've obviously heard the quote somewhere, but it, you you haven't failed until you've given up. I think that mm-hmm. um, yep. is. Uh, is our friend who created the light bulbs, um, Edison. Uh, Edison, yeah. But I think, yeah. But I honestly, uh, I would see that we've definitely had challenges, but they're probably the biggest learning experiences that you have. You know, so um, when I was with Forrest, uh, I was very much, although we were a joint CEO with my my partner and I, I was very much the sales director, and he was, um, uh, he was very much in in the office um but really stringing everybody together uh, empowering the team he developed a lot of those kind of soft skills whereas i was very much out um developing my sales skills so when i started uh, aduco gym that was probably uh, i was very familiar with the selling part not so much with the building the team part and that has been the the biggest challenge that i've had and um it's probably part of my character. I, I like to be able to do a, a, a lot of things and um, I can do them to um, a decent enough level. Probably now realizing that you can find people who can do uh, elements of what I do at a much better level. And it's trusting people to do that. And I think um, that's probably the biggest challenge, you know, when you're maybe doing a couple of million in turnover, going to 10 million uh, is, is really about the team and the people. And that's what we're really making a big effort to invest in now is uh, so that we can really supercharge our growth. It's uh, really developing and growing people. I think those are the biggest, that's definitely one of the biggest challenges. Um, you're a bit harsh on yourself, um, but yes, it, it great, great story. But I, I want to defend you a little bit. I think you're a bit harsh on yourself. Your team absolutely love you, right? So... Uh, and, and, and I and I think, but where where you've really summed it up, there's a big difference going from a million to two, and then there's a greater difference going from two to ten. And I think the biggest challenge that most business owners face is getting having the ability to let go and trust. That's so you said trust, but it's also letting go, knowing yeah. that you can reach out um, and 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 go to people who have been there before, right? Um, you know, in your case, you came to me. We 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 worked through it. We understood it. Then you even went to the extent of saying, "Hang on, bugger you! 
fly to Ireland, come and actually spend three weeks here. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm glad that I did that. You know, I haven't, you know, that was post COVID. It was, you know, it was still wearing masks and needing vaccination certificates for everything. Um, but, but I, I've got to say, you are a really good example of a really good boss, right? Who, um, who never, never knew that they could lead and not just manage. Does that make sense? And I think you are now leading, right? You've got, You've got, you know, Angela, who's taking control, and we've we've gone. Okay, Angela, you're really good at this stuff. Like, you're great at inspiring your team. She's organised. She's structured. I mean, she's Scottish, right? So, you know, it's like another bloody accent. Like, I'll tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You want to get an education uh, in understanding people, then you need to go to Ireland, where and and then just hang out at a Duco gym. There is every culture represented. It's like an Emirates Airlines flight. Like every name badge has a different flag on it. Okay, um, but uh, but yeah, it took me it took me a couple of days to really understand Angela. Um, and but you know, it's you built a phenomenal pet team. I, I you know I say this because uh, not because I've I've been privileged enough to work with you guys. It's actually because it's true. Um, you know, you, 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 you take that human, you know, there are three human desires, right? Uh, customers have three desires, health, wealth, and relationships. And, and I think that the health need that the Duco gym, um, delivers is, you know, 50% in the science and, and the system, but the other 50% is in the Duco and in the people. And, um, you don't walk in there not expecting to get outcomes, and that's very powerful, because I've 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 trained in a lot of systems and I've never, and a lot of gyms, and you know, you don't get any of that, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and that's I think that's really unique. powerful. So great great lesson there for our younger audiences and even the established businesses. Um, you know, Jamie Jamie said it right here. Um, so Jamie, if you could turn back time, I was about to sing sing you a song. Uh, if you could turn back time, but Cher said it a little bit differently, and, and talk to your 18-year-old self, right? What would you tell them? Um, so I if think- you could rewind the clock 40 years from now, right? So going back 40 years because you're 58 now, right? Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> the Duco Gym is, is great, but not that life transformationally great. <laughs> um, no, but if you could turn back the clock, to your 18-year-old self, what advice would you give them today? Yeah, I don't know if people would be able to relate to this, but I think one of the most important things that you can do when you're in business is um, I think you could leverage the results and the success that you're having a lot more. When you're younger and you have a result, uh, I think you're so busy looking at what the next thing needs to be or the next milestone that you need to hit that you don't really fully leverage what it is that you've achieved. So, you know, you get a great result with somebody and then it's how much you leverage that result to really grow the business and move it forward. Often you can sort of, maybe it's part of my character, um, maybe being a bit too modest sometimes that you don't really make a big enough deal of uh, of what your the successes that you're that you're doing, and they're, they're genuine, real successes, because I think that leveraging that when you look back at it, you think, oh my god, we didn't really make full use of that result that we achieved. Um, and I think, I think it's so important. It's a very Irish thing not to celebrate your results. I think also I would really encourage people to celebrate their successes because the more you celebrate your successes, the more they stand out in your mind. And the more that they stand out in your mind, the more you use that win, that success to build on the next one. People often put a lot of emotional weight into failures as they perceive them. And when they go to do the next thing, that weighs down heavily on them and almost provides a barrier to achieving the next results because they're so, they think they can often lose confidence very quickly. You can see it in professional sport. You know, people really, giving themselves a hard time over maybe a bad shot or a bad result. And then they, they start to lose confidence quite quickly because their mind, they're not building up their mind. You know, it, it Duco gym, funny enough, it's, it's really about building up your body, but it's actually also about building up your mind. 
So you're getting a result, getting yourself into shape, which let's face it, people struggle with it. People struggle getting into shape, knowing what to do. And uh, But if you achieve a result, then you really got to celebrate it because then you have achieved that. You put your mind on an outcome and you've achieved that outcome. So then what else could you put your mind to? You start to suddenly think, what else is possible if I've done this? then I should do this. So it's it's kind of twofold. It's getting a result and really leveraging that result. So making the most out of it and then also celebrating, uh, really making sure you celebrate your successes. Awesome. So great, great, great insight for your, for those, those younger audience members, but also great advice for anyone of any age, right? Um, life with only achievement is a life unfulfilled. You need fulfillment. And um, and that's something that I preach to all my clients. I preach to you. Um, you know, if you don't get the purest of joys from doing a task, but also from the outcome of that task, then you're just working towards an endless pit of achievement. And 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 that that's meaningless. So uh, I think that's really good advice, Jamie. Jamie, um, the last question before we go into the fire, fast five, a lot of fast five and five. Uh, I always get stuck on that one. What's the most important thing that you've learned in your life? I think that people that aren't that um, you have unlimited power and potential, and I think it's understanding how to harness that power and potential. So I think okay. that uh, so, when, you set, when you set your mind to something, anything is achievable. Right. And what was life like before you knew that? Uh, I think life requires a lot more effort uh, before you realize that. So when you understand the power of your mind, how to focus on a goal or an outcome, it can be a, it can be a very heavy conscious effort to make things happen where you feel you've got to do it all yourself um you know there's great power in having multiple people heading for an outcome as well i think and uh, that also makes things a lot more effortless when you when you get the right person or the right people around you um it's like uh you know one plus one equals two but when you have two really high energy people it's a multiplier effect it's way more than the the sum of the combined parts. Excellent. All right. So fast five in five, as the name suggests, you don't actually get much time to talk about it or think about it. So here we go. <clears throat> what makes you feel inspired? Uh, results, getting results with people. Okay. What is the best compliment you have ever received? Um, you know, by my character, that's a very hard question. Um, yeah, uh, the best compliments, um, oh, people, people would say I've, I have a uh, great charisma. I think that's. Yeah. Uh, Philip, that, Philip, that DJed at my wedding, wedding, Philip, with an F, <laughs> that <laughs> Philip with an F summed you up perfectly. <laughs> Right, he said, "Jamie's got charisma." <laughs> and Philip, if you're listening, Philip has also got a top-rated podcast, uh, and is a dear friend of ours. Philip, with an F, we salute you. You you played an amazing gig in that last hour and a half job. set at the wedding, uh, and thank you. Um, if you could be remembered for just one thing, what would it be? Making a difference. Excellent, and. What's your best book recommendation? Uh, good to great, Jim Collins. Yeah, phenomenal book. Everyone that knows me knows that I talk about Jim Collins all the time, right? Uh, I remember the first time I met Jamie, he had good to great sitting on his window ledge. Yeah, and uh, I quizzed him. Uh, for, for some reason, I have two copies. <laughs> right. That's because you decided that, hey, i got to get another one. Um, yeah. And interesting, I, I, I started quoting things out of, Good to great. And he didn't pick up on him. And so I turned around. You remember this? And I said, when was the last time you read the book that's sitting on your ledge? He goes, oh, right. And he went back and he reread it. 
And it is. It's one of the most magnificent books ever written. Uh, Jim Collins is a former Stanford grad uh, professor at Stanford, and um, he's uh, phenomenal. The research is is excellent. So, Jamie, the last question, and this is uh, this plays perfectly to your personality, so you're not going to really like this question. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Billboards. Yeah, you have those in um, Ireland. I've seen them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I would want a billboard. Um, that definitely wouldn't be my style. Uh, so I to, I've even gone out. Of, I've even gone out of focus. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, so <laughs> if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? It doesn't have to be about you. Um, if I could have a billboard, I I think I'm just gonna try and if I if I if I could have a billboard, I probably would have a some some type of result maybe with uh, Robbie Williams on it, um, with the Aduco Gym Time Machine. I think that would uh, that would do us pretty good. Yeah, it would do a lot better than whatever you just did to your camera. I know um, it's even worse. <laughs> you know, all all of the see see now the true Jamie's coming out. He's white. He's pale. He's ghosty. There's no muscle on him. Nothing. You know, the photoshopping, the video shopping is all done. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't know what's happened to you then, but that you just like lighting changed. My but listen, camera we has are, decided to. That's right. To focus. It's you know what it is. You were talking about yourself, which you don't do, and your camera is not used to it, and it's gone. <laughs> yeah. No. But uh, look, Jamie, it's been an absolute privilege and honor having you on the show. A uh, thank you for making the time this morning, and and I do want to take. The time to thank all of our listeners. Uh, I, I really value you, we, my team, and all of our uh, podcast uh, uh, guests. Thank you. Uh, we've got hundreds and thousands of podcasts out in the world, and yet uh, a, a following loves to listen to ours, and, and I really appreciate that. Um, we are going to make all the show notes available at the end. Um, of the podcast. Jamie's URL, his LinkedIn URL is going to be there. Duco Gym's uh, uh, website will be there. I encourage you to have a look. And if you have any questions, uh, please email uh, or, or directly message Jamie on his um, on his LinkedIn profile. He's very active on there. Um, and, uh, and also a massive shout out to my team at the Business Growth Mindset, Growth Outsource Media, so Charlie and Argentum Ligno, for all their support and resilience because it takes a lot to put up with me. I don't know where that noise came from because everything's on Do Not Disturb. Um, but if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please do. And uh, make sure you change those notification settings because if you don't, you will miss future episodes. But, Jamie, from thank Australia you. to Ireland, thank you. Um, say hi to Jen and the boys. Um, we are really excited that you are going to come to Australia uh, to do the openings, hopefully January. Um, that's, yep. that's what we're aiming for. We're currently scouting sites and locations. If any of our yep. listeners know of any locations where we should open up, please send me a email uh, or send it directly to Tracy, Tracy with a Y at Um, But more importantly, Jamie, thank you. Bless you. And until next time, live with purpose. 